Hey VC, it's Ron. Thanks for stopping by. Hope everybody's been doing well. Nice rainy day here in Phoenix. Uh, pretty much rained all morning. So in fact, it's raining right now. So very cool. And I love it. So uh, before we get going with the records, I want to take the time to welcome all my new subscribers. I've been picking up a lot lately over the past couple of months. And uh, I really appreciate everybody signing on and I hope to stay with me. So, uh, now to the vinyl. What, what is on that turntable right now? Well, it's the first goth rock song ever, Bella Lugosi's Dad by Bauhaus. And I recently picked this up. This is like a 40th anniversary release of the original Bella Sessions. Or Session actually recorded all the tracks in one day. Five recordings. And so this is everything right here. And uh, some of these songs were later re-recorded um, by the band, but this contains all the original tracks. So very cool. I'm not sure if this is uh, UK or US. I think it might be an import. Uh, this is the original tape box artwork. And it also came with a reproduction of the original poster that came in the Bella Lugosi's Dead 12 inch 45. Just a great track. I mean, once you hear this song, it just sticks with you. You'll never forget it. That's a sign of a great song. Okay, I'm going to show a couple of punk rock albums that I picked up. I picked up The Weirdos, Weird World, 1977 and 1981. And uh, this has got previously unreleased tracks as well as rare recordings from 45s. And this band was uh, part of the first wave of punks out of the Los Angeles area. And uh, it comes with an insert. It was released in 1991 on Frontier Label. I listened to side one of this. I've not listened to side two yet. Now this is a bit more uh, raw and punkier than their Rhino release. And uh, I have a past judgment on it. I liked it. I gotta listen to the whole thing. I gotta listen to it a couple of times and then I'll really get a feel of what it's like. But it sounded good to me. Now this one I think I liked a little bit better. And it's Eddie and the Hot Rods, Teenage Depression. Uh, they were a UK band and uh, this is a US version of their first album. And unfortunately, it's not a mirror image of the UK album. Uh, some of the songs were removed for US release and they were replaced with the live recordings of uh, Live at the Marquee, which is originally a 7 inch EP. So uh, I kind of wish it had been the the exact UK version but uh, still really cool and uh, I am going to post a link to a live video of this band on the TV show The Old Grey Whistle Test. Just a killer 
video. So uh, check that out. Check this band out. Okay. Sundays just released a new 50 foot hose album of previously unreleased recordings and it's called Bad Trips. This is really good. And it was released on Modern Harmonic, which I think is a sub label of Sundays. This is a 2019 release. It just came out. And uh, it has the band's first single, which was released. In 1960, I, I, it was, I guess it was released in 1965, either 65 or early 66. It was recorded in 1965 at one of the band members' house. And uh, both tracks are uh, just heavy psych instrumental freakouts. But they have, they have structure. I mean, it wasn't like a freeform thing where everybody just do your own thing. I think it was actually planned out and uh, just amazing. Uh, they, they present Bad Trip in um, 33 and a third speed as well as 45 RPM speed. And uh, so it could be played either way. Um, it's got a couple alternate versions of songs that are on the album as well as four tracks uh, that were not on the album, and also the two tracks from their Mary Jane 45. Here's a picture of the band. Here's the hype sticker. So this was definitely one to get. Sounded good for what it is. And I definitely recommend that. Okay, I picked up Budgie Bandolier. This is an original UK pressing. Come out in 1975. MCA label. And uh, this is considered to be one of the one of the best, if not the best, Budgie albums. And it's just got this amazing closing track, uh, Napoleon Bonaparte 1 and the Mo Napoleon Bonaparte 2, which closes the album. It starts out, part one is sort of this gentle ballad, and then it just goes into this amazing, heavy riff song that for me to uh, to describe it I would say think of Hearts Barracuda it has that kind of a riff but this predates that song by two years so just awesome underrated power trio right here if you don't know this band you really need to look into them and I love this artwork it reminds me of a takeoff of Planet of the Apes. You know, plan, the, the soldiers were on their horses, you know? But instead of apes, they're birds. So, excellent. Uh, here's another one that I picked up. It's Juke and Bone. And these guys were out of the New York area. This is hard and heavy blues-based rock. Uh, it come out on the RCA Dynaflex label, and this is their second album. They only had two albums. This is their second and final album. And I did read that the band is reunited, and they're planning on doing some gigs in the New York area later this year. So, uh, yeah, this is excellent, excellent. Um, I have not heard the first one, but like I said, this is this is the one to have for sure. 
Okay, I flipped that Bauhaus record over. This next one I got is I got the second and last, the great conspiracy of the peanut butter conspiracy. And this is uh this has been on my radar for some time now. Uh, it's a bit harder to find than their first one. And uh, actually either one of those is not that easy to find out in the wild, but I picked this one up. I mean, it's not in the greatest of shape, but it plays really good. So that's the most important thing. I thought this is a really solid, good album. I, th if I had to gripe about anything about this album, it would be the harmony vocals. Uh, male, female vocal, you know, that typical San Francisco sound for sure. And uh, I think if it had been a little more freaky and not as much harmony vocal, it would have been a lot better album. Okay, uh, here's one uh, on the Tetragrammaton label. Steve Barron or Barron Quartet. And uh, this come out in 1969. Uh, I'm trying to remember a lot of this stuff. I've not uh, looked at it in a while. I think this came out in 69. And uh, there's the label. This is just really good. Uh, folk styled rock and uh, the opening track the mother of, of us all uh, that that's just one that it, it really it really grabs you and uh, sticks in your head for a while really really good song uh, in fact uh, Pete Townsend really uh, must admire this band because um, he actually did some liner notes on the back cover for the band. So, yeah, excellent. Not one you see around much and uh, well worth checking out. Then I got the, uh, the last uh, album by the 1910 Fruit Gun Company. And uh, look at that cool cover. Yeah, this has got a little bit more of a heavier sound. They're going in a different direction with this album. Uh, it's not that lightweight, teeny bop, bubblegum stuff that they had been doing. Um, it's got some cool psych uh, moments on it and uh, a lot of organ and uh, yeah, pretty cool man. I mean, I, I would say check this one out for sure. It's on the Buddha label. Got the first album by Brotherhood. And uh, this is a spin off band from uh, the Raiders, Paul Rivera and the Raiders. Uh, here's Fang. So, I mean, I hate the cover. I mean, that picture is just terrible. But uh, the album's pretty good. And it's on the heavy orange RCA uh, label. Heavy pressing. Come out in 1968. And this was still sealed when I got it. And luckily, when I opened it, it looked really nice condition. Um, I've opened up a couple of still sealed albums in the past. And uh, yeah, it had like rubs and spots and stuff from being in the sleeve for so long, getting moved around maybe in the car you know getting vibrated or whatever whatever it was you know but it wasn't near mint by any means so buying sealed albums is risky because you just don't know what you're gonna get uh, picked up uh, the last Tom rap pearls before swine beautiful lies you could live in it's come out in 1971 and it is a white label promo. 
this is a really good album rates about four stars um, my only complaint what with it when it comes to Tom rap I really like his moody ballads I mean that's mainly what the guys no, known for doing and uh, this has a, a couple of uh, more upbeat songs which kind of breaks the mood of the album but like I say it, it rates high it's one of the, the, the better ones after the first two Pearls Before Swine it's definitely one of the better ones on the reprise label so glad to get that there was one that came out after that they had the Pearls Before Swine banner but that was actually stuff that reprise pulled out of the vault against Tom Rapp's wishes so he was not pleased that uh, that stuff got out okay let me show a few British things real quick uh, stereo fake stereo copy of the Spencer Davis group on the uh, United Artist label so now I have uh, all the US Spencer Davis group LPs Now, this is, I didn't know this before, but that's, of course, Steve Winwood, but that's his brother. That's his older brother. I believe his name was uh, Muff. That's probably a nickname. So that's Muff Winwood. Um, picked up a mono Trog's Wild thing. And uh, the cover's beautiful, but the vinyl's. This is actually, yeah, this is actually one of the monos that has mono cover, mono labels, but it plays reprocessed stereo. And there's really, there, you gotta look in the matrix to look at the matrix code to determine which pressing you have. So yeah, I thought I was getting a mono copy and uh, it's, it's fake stereo. But a really nice cover. A bit different from the stereo. Here's the stereo. So this has got a uh, different color wild thing. And it's in a different style of fonts. And this is different too. So kind of interesting. Okay, I picked up a couple of Beatles bootlegs. Um, this is an Aldi. Those were the days. And uh, I think I might have had this on a uh, cassette a long time ago. I think a friend of mine had it and I recorded it from him. Because it just sounds really familiar. I, I recognized a lot of this stuff that's on here. It's on the contraband label, although it does have blank labels. So, pretty nice shape though and I got it really good price on it so and I old bootlegs like only old bootlegs like that you know if the price is right I'll, I'll definitely grab it um, here's an old uh, picture disc bootleg casualties and uh, this is the original release of it later on it came out with a much clearer front photo and uh, it didn't show the casualties up here and the back had all the track uh, information um, it wasn't cut off like it was like it is here so it's kind of a new improved version of this but this is the original uh, version I Discog says that this came out in 1980 so it's old and uh, this is the bag it didn't have a cardboard cover with it. It was in this bag. And uh, you know, you can see the wear where the record has been in there for a long, long time. It was uh, melt sealed at the top. You can see where they opened it up. And uh, I was doing some uh, investigation on it and I, it appears that this is the way that it came originally. Although some of them did have some, a uh, black cardboard die cut cover. Uh, this version came like this. Okay, one more. Uh, Sonic's 10 inch. 
uh, nine, uh, no, nine, no, eight. It's got eight tracks on it, so they called it A. And it's from Sonic Boom Records in Seattle, which is pretty cool. Uh, this is the green vinyl, green and black vinyl edition. It also did come in a solid black. Um, if you just look at it in room lighting, it looks black, but it does have green swirl in it. And uh, let, me, let me show you what it looks like here. Hopefully you're getting that. This is really cool. It came out before their uh, reunion album came out. And uh, half of it's live. And the other half of it is uh, new recordings by the band. Uh, Cheap Shades, Bad Attitude, Don't back down and vampire kiss so really cool came out uh, 2010 so this is this is a really cool one to got okay that's gonna do it uh, for this video and uh, everybody have a good week and I'll catch you next time bye